Hello, and before I go any further after the hello, I want to say a huge thank you to Jim at Fulcrum of the Force for that absolutely kick-ass intro. Uh, I have to say, he did the last one as well, which was really, really good. I've used that every time. Uh, I am now upgrading it to the new one that he has done for me because it is sick and I'm really impressed with it. So thank you very much, Jim, uh, Fulcrum of the Force, for doing that. I'll put a link, if I'll try and remember to put a link at the bottom of the description. Uh, but if you want to check out like lightsaber reviews and all things like that and Lego uh, Star Wars, uh, he's the channel to see, Fulcrum of the Force, man. He's, uh, he's absolutely awesome. Uh, so the reason for the video today... Um, I am doing some, as you know, I've been working on doing some chassis uh, for me to do that uh, iteration, uh, like things like this. Uh, I needed a 3D printer uh, and I was about to do my second generation of chassis uh, and I went off to go and print it and it didn't work. Uh, half, the screen, uh, half of the prints on one side of the build plate worked and the other uh, side, it just didn't do anything. So... Uh, I'm actually going to show you um, what to do when basically your, your prints are failing. Uh, so I'm going to go into the workshop and I'll meet you there. Okay, so I'm in the workshop now um, and I'm going to pan around. Before you see this, I do apologise for the mess. It's uh, quite, Having resin, it's quite messy. So here we are. I have got an Eligu Saturn 8K. I also have an Eligu Mars 3 Pro. Now the Eligu Mars 3 Pro, that's fine. Um, there's, it doesn't need change or anything like that. I don't. It's just got this powdery stuff on the front. It just wipes off. Uh, but I do take a lot of care with these. Um, one thing I would say about the the Eligu Mars uh, Eligu Mars 3 Pro, um, I love the fact that the USB and the button is on the front. Uh, now, a little tip, a lot of 3D printers, uh, like the Eligu Saturn 8K, the Eligu uh, Saturn 2, and uh, the Eligu Saturn 2K, and blah, 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 a lot of these have their USB port down the side. Now, I found it very frustrating to get that, so I've bought a USB, a 50, a half a meter USB extension cable that actually fits in on the side, so it actually has that uh, connection point on the uh, the USB and I'd literally just plug that in and now I've got this um, USB port uh, just to the side it works absolutely fine There's, it, the Eligu has no issue with me uh, doing this uh, for the USB information uh, it works without any issues and it just means I don't have to constantly try and put uh, it put take it in and out the USB port on the side because I will say something every time I try putting it in I always felt I was going to break the USB port off its mount so I was very worried about doing that um, so it's something I avoided doing uh, you will have noticed there's a blue strip on here as well uh, this is what they use for brewing hops and what it does is it's basically um, a wire filament that goes around and it heats up and it heats up the liquid inside now um, when I come in in the morning to do a print it is very very cold in here uh, it must be around 14 degrees the resin needs to be around 20 degrees so I use a timer and I will uh, set this to go off for about an hour before I want to start printing in the morning um, and when I get here it, the liquid is uh, almost at the exact temperature of 20 degrees uh, after about an hour to maybe an hour and a half you can speed it speed up the process it has got a variable um, control so you can have it turned off or you can have it on max and if you put it on max it does heat up very quickly but to maintain temperature I find halfway about halfway is just what you need so uh, that's why the blue band is on there uh, I'm going to take the lid off uh, if you give me one moment I'm just going to pop you onto a stand and then you can see me doing the next part Okay, so I'll just take the lid off because we don't need that for now. Um, so one other good thing is I watched uh, Uncle Jesse and I bought uh, this scraper was a lot longer as a normal scraper uh, and I cut it down so that it's just uh, it's a size that fits inside the 
the actual um, resin tank uh, and it's actually very very good and very very handy to use one of these to actually scrape off resin like that and what I'll do is generally when the build plate is around here I'll actually quickly go onto the print and I will scrape that off uh, I will get some gloves <clears throat> uh, at the end of the day this is resin and you may not have any reaction to it straight away but the longer resin comes in contact with your skin and more often it comes in contact with your skin it can cause severe uh, severe issues so you must wear gloves when doing this so there's my gloves uh, and I'm just going to get a little bit of cloth just to wipe down make sure there's no resin getting anywhere I don't want it to get so there we go um, right <clears throat> I want you to have a good look at the build plate so I'm going to move you over here and zoom in a little bit okay right so the reason why I I am 99% sure the issue is the FEP sheet on the uh, base of the tank. The reason why I think that is because the tank hasn't changed in any way whatsoever. I'm still using the same resin. The build plate is still fully fixed in place. It doesn't move. If this build plate, if you find that this build plate starts to move, which it has done for me once a while ago, uh, you need to really tighten it into place. Not with the bolts, but it actually screws around. So you need to really screw that to uh, to make sure that's not going to move, uh, because your prints will start warping in a weird kind of uh, angle. Uh, I actually cancelled the print when it was about here because I didn't want to waste any more resin. Um, <clears throat> I'll take this off now. So like I said, the build plate was completely solid. It wasn't coming apart or anything, <clears throat> which uh, let me let me know there was an issue. There was meant to be a print here. Oops, I'll just... Uh, God's sake. So as you can see, this has failed just at the base there. That failed because it should be over here. Uh, the only thing that actually didn't fail was this. So what that's telling me is the FET sheet on this side has, well, it's become more used. It's, bec it's got to the point where, <clears throat> where it's not as, um, uh, I don't, it, it's got more elasticity in it than it used to have. Now, the things that we're going to need is I'm going to need uh, something to pour all this into uh, and I'm going to need something to channel all of that into the, the bottle uh, for when I take out the resin so that it doesn't go everywhere and we can get to the FEP sheet. Uh, you'll see people say they use, that people have a, diff a number of different things. Uh, with my resin I get these um, and they have these fine mesh uh, you get three with every uh, every every one of these bottles, um, and that's great. But they tend to want to flop around, and I don't particularly use them. So what I did is I actually purchased a proper funnel, and the great thing about the funnel is it has this additional part that you can just take out and clean whenever you need, and it's got nice tiny tiny little holes. So it lets the resin through really well but it stops 99.9% of everything else coming out. So first thing, we'll take off the, take out the screws. <clears throat> so that we can remove the tank. Before I remove the tank, I'm gonna undo these clips. So I can take off this heating element usually comes off a lot easier than that to be completely honest <clears throat> where's that uh, no, it's there. I just want to get that little bit of resin that's sort of driven through as you can see all this is very clear of any resin 
So the next thing to do, get my tub, place that on the top as well. And then the tank should just come off. There we go. There is a sort of funnel here to allow resin to drain out. Just let that uh, go in. The frustrating thing is I literally just put a load of resin in this tank, uh, ready for doing a load of print, large prints, uh, for it to then obviously start failing because the FEP sheet was not happy. So, grudgingly, I now have to empty the whole tank. But this is one of those things, I, I'm, I'm constantly thinking, should I have gone with a FDM printer over a resin printer? Um, and it's a very good question. An FDM printer, it can print a lot faster than a resin printer. Um, you can have multiple colours very easily, uh, you know, and it's one of those things where uh, there is a lot of benefits to an FDM printer. Now, for me personally, I'm happy that I went with a resin printer, even though there are maintenance things like this that you have to do. Um, when a FDM printer goes wrong, it goes wrong. Um, and you know about it when it does. Because you have like this spaghetti crazy hair thing. Um, from when you did it. Okay, I think that's about all I'm going to get out of there. I mean the FEP sheet still looks okay. It doesn't look bad actually to be honest. Which is... Interesting. While I'm here, I'm just going to give that a quick test. Make sure that the LEDs are all working and there's no issue with the LEDs. Right, so uh, tools, tank clean. Next. Yep, yeah, all the LEDs are working. Nothing, there's nothing wrong with the LEDs whatsoever, so we know that there's nothing wrong with the build plate, we know there's nothing wrong with the LEDs. So I can turn that back off again. I'll turn it off there. And looking at this, there's no resin anywhere on here whatsoever, so that's really good. Uh, that means no resin has got through or got past this point. So I'm very happy. So this is now all drained through, but I'm going to leave that as it is there for now. Actually, no, I'll take this off. And put that there. I'm going to put the lid back on. I'm actually going to put this on a radiator to warm it up so that it's ready to pour straight back in. And then I can do a test print to make sure everything's working again. So I'll be back in one moment. Okay, so uh, I'm going to need some blue roll so I can mop up all the resin from the tank so it's not going to make a huge, huge mess. We have our tank here and it's just going to take me a moment just to quickly go around with this uh, blue roll just to get all the resin that I can off. The FEP sheet, to be honest, the FEP, the FEP sheet, it does look pretty good. It doesn't look like there's really any issues with the FEP sheet, which is frustrating because it seems like it could have lasted longer. And like I showed, some uh, one side of it was still working. Now, I could have just printed on the one side that was working uh, in the hope that I could have got more prints out. But to be honest, uh, I need to use the entire build space. so. I may as well do this process now. Um, right, so that's the tank all nice and clean. 
Uh, I just need to go around the outside because it did pour over that quite a lot. So just uh, give the outside a, a good clean as well. Make sure it's got no resin on it. Okay, let's do that where my hands have been touching. Okay. Now I actually left the um, the protective sheet on in case there are any leaks because I didn't want that to get on the uh, on the device. So I'm actually going to put that back on. I do want this to be protected. And I'm fluffing it up completely. <coughs> okay, so Ouch! I'm going to take those off. Um, you may see this big black thing here beside me. Let me uh, let me just let, let have a look at this. So, I needed something that would cure uh, a lot of resin in one go. Uh, I didn't want to spend 160 pounds on a, cu a curing station because it's very expensive. So I bought. A piece of uh, PVC, which I put in the oven, uh, so it would become all, uh, so it would melt. Uh, and then I got two lots of UV LED strips, which were 2.5 meters. And I just went backwards and forwards with it like that, as you can see. So all that is UV. I'll just put that to the side. And then what I did is I bought a turntable. Um, so I bought a turntable, can you see that clearly? I bought a turntable, I bought two acrylic discs, a little bit of acrylic uh, rods, um, screwed them in place and glued them in place, and then glued them onto the base dead centre. So this now spins at a nice steady speed in conjunction with having this go right around it. So I'd say at least fifty percent of one at least fifty percent of one side of all the UV is getting cleared. Um, I don't know if I can actually show it from the other side. I'll have it go for you guys. So there's a load of UV LEDs up here to do the top side, and there's a huge bank to do the bottom side and also high parts as well. So I can cure things on this level. I can also cure things on the top as well uh, and it takes around 10 minutes to cure something but this thing works absolutely amazing it's one of the best things I've ever made uh, when you see the uh, the price of 160 pounds which is around what the uh, any cubic curing station is uh, for something that cost about uh, 10 it was 10 pound per LED strip so about 20 pounds for the LED strips uh, £10 for the two discs, £10 for the uh, the turntable, uh, and then £10 for that, so 10 20 30 40 50 60 So it's about £60, £70. Pounds. So yes, it's not cheap, It's you know, it's, but it's well below the £160 for the actual legitimate curing station, and also it can clear a huge amount more than what that can. So I just thought I'd let you see that so you know what that was in case you were wondering. Uh, but it's absolutely brilliant and it works really really well and then when I'm done it just tucks off straight in the background. Uh, so I'm going to get my tools <coughs> so you can do the FEP sheet. Is it this one for that? No nope, it's not. So on the uh, on the LED Saturn 8K, this is just the same. Um, I can zoom back out now. So uh, this tank is just the same as the other ones, uh, as in the way it's designed. I, I think the the design of this. See.
it, it doesn't seem like it's deforming at all. It has got some dints in there. It's not super cloudy, but we'll carry on anyway because I do think we need to replace it. Um, as I was saying, it has this amazing system where it actually puts a FEP sheet in and then it clamps it in place and tightens it, which is, it really is an amazing, uh, amazing way of doing it. I'm, I'm very impressed by how it's designed. I'll most probably speed up this process. <laughs> Uh, right, so <clears throat> I have now taken off all the screws um, and I'm ready to put the new FEP sheet on the frame. Uh, something really important. Now, I had another 3D printer before the Eligu Saturn S. Sorry, the Eligu Saturn 8K, which, and the one I had before was the Eligu Saturn S. <clears throat> uh, and I thought it would be a great idea to put this on the lowest setting and to unscrew everything with this and then screw everything back in with it um, and it is a lot of it does take a long time it does hurt your hand to undo all these screws but do not use uh, a screwdriver uh, um, a drill or an electric screwdriver uh, do it by hand uh, because if once these uh, little uh, once these tiny little things have gone so hard to see it's so small but once that's gone, uh, you're then in a, a world of trouble trying to find replacements. Um, just do it by hand. There is no fast way of doing this, unfortunately. Do it by hand. Take your time. Um, and, you know, that way you're going to be safe. You're not going to ruin your the metal frame that holds a FEP sheet in part, which is incredibly important. Um, and the other interesting thing is, when I, uh, with the other FEP sheet, uh, when I uh, when I had done, done the first lot of screws, I found that this was actually very very loose. <clears throat> it wasn't as tight as what the new FEP sheet new FEP sheet will be when I put it back on. So it may have seemed like it was taut and fine and everything like that, but actually, really, it, it really wasn't. It really did need replacing. So let's carry on with the with the task, shall we?
So once that's done you then need to trim off the excess. So that's that done. Now we need our tank. Okay, so let me zoom out a little bit. Um, everything is back together again. The FEP sheet, FEP sheet is now back on, uh, as you can see here. Ha! Huh. That that is how taut it is. It's now actually acting as a skin of a drum. So when we took off the the previous FEP sheet. It felt very, very tight. It felt like it was on there and there was no issues. It is nowhere near as stretched taut. It's, it's echoing, it's vibrating from my voice. It's so taut now. Like a drum. There's a huge difference. And now it's so blatantly obvious it really was the FEP sheet that had the problem. Look at that. Sorry, I just love that sound. Um, so, when you're putting this back on, you have to go for all the original screws and it might look like it's not on very tight. Don't panic, it's normal. When you do the first set of screws with the FEP sheet, uh, that's absolutely normal. It won't be tight. Uh, when you get to the next point, um, one thing I would say is I always try and do the counter opposite when putting screws. So if I put a screw in here, I'll put the next one in here. If I put a screw in there, I'll put the next one in here and vice versa. I always try and do the opposite to try and keep it taut as possible. Um, so when you then, once you've got the first lot of screws in, it's all kind of loose, you think, oh my god, it's not going to work. You turn the uh, fetch sheet over, you put it on the, uh, the main base, and then you do, I do the four screws in each corner first as a starter, um, and then you just go around, and the more these I go in, the tighter and tighter and tighter this sheet. <laughs> becomes I mean this is a drum now for God's sake um, so I'm just going to give it a very very gently I'm just going to get a bit of what the uh, blue jay cloth just give it a little wipe not much and then I'm going to spray some of this uh, silicon 515 uh, which is just a bit of a lubricating spray I'm just going to spray that inside which you'll see me do uh, and that's just to try and make sure uh, the FEP sheet isn't uh, very sticky when printing 
Uh, I don't know how effective it is, personally. I don't think it makes a huge amount of difference. Um, to be honest, I, I've I've not uh, I've tried it with, I've tried it without, and I'll be honest. I I don't think if I can say, oh yeah, it really really worked. It was such a benefit to putting this on. I I, I think some people will swear by it. I think some people won't. I don't know. Um, me personally, I'm not that bothered uh, by it. So a couple little dots. There we go. Right. So that is now done. Ready for the uh, silicon release agent to try and help every little bit we can because uh, when these things stick on it's a ball in there pain in the ass right I think it's about 20 centimeters shake well before use hold approximately 20 centimeters okay So that's what it looks like with it in, but we're going to leave it to uh, dry out for a little bit. I'm just going to give this surface a quick wipe down so I can put that back on. There we go. Right, I just want to grab you. Hey, you. Um, right, okay, so again, if, you, uh, if I didn't show it very clearly, let me uh, show you this thing. So, you can see here the actual print failed. It, so, like, it, it started to print and then it went in half and it, 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 a layer just stopped altogether. Um, and you can see it right on the base. Can, it's very hard to get a good angle. I'm sorry about this. So, you can see there. So right there, it just it, it just wasn't nothing was holding it in place, um, and it's blatantly obvious to see this print. Uh, this print here, it just literally just stopped printing altogether, and it got stuck to the FEP sheet. For some reason, that side worked okay, but this this side, everything from like halfway down the build plate, uh, was just a nightmare. So uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to uh, put the tank uh, back on the printer uh, once that's done um, I'm going to let it cool out I'm going to take these prints off the build plate clean the build plate and then I'm going to set another run off just to test it and make sure everything's working so uh, after the putting the thing back onto the printer uh, you'll then jump to the four or five hours from now where we've actually got a print so let's carry on Okay, so that is everything. Don't forget my carbon filter. Just a little thing with the carbon filter. Oh gosh, it fell off. <clears throat> Just a little thing with the carbon filter that you get with these. Uh, this will come inside a um, plastic bag. So you have to take it out of the plastic bag before you can start using it. Uh, it will not work, the carbon filter will not work unless you take that plastic bag out. So it's not something, I didn't realise it was in a plastic bag, I just plugged it straight in. But trust me, it's in a plastic bag, you need to take it out. So this is all now prepped, it's all ready. Um, so yeah, I'll put that back on and then we'll get a print done and we can see the results when it's finished. See you in about five hours. Okay, so we're back. What has been a blink in the eye for yourselves has been about four, well, about four hours for print time for myself. Uh, so I'm going to show you what has happened. We have now replaced the FEP sheet and 
I've cancelled the print, because that's why it's only got that far. But every single one of these has come off absolutely perfectly. Not one issue, not one problem, absolute perfect print. So, as you can see, if you are getting prints where it's starting to separate or there's gaps in the actual print, um, that is because the FEP sheet is on its way out. Uh, you may get a couple more prints if one side's going like it was before. But if it's not doing that, then it is, in fact, a FEP sheet issue. Uh, and you do need to replace it. So, I hope, uh, I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, I know there's lots of videos out there. Uh, I actually, when this issue came out, I did try and find out uh, what it could be. I knew the build plate was absolutely spot on. And there was no issues with the build plate. I knew the LEDs or the UV lamp underneath had no issues whatsoever because it was all working fine. Um, so I, I knew for a fact that the only thing left that it could be, the only variable left, was the FEP sheet. And uh, it is exactly as I thought. I replaced it with a brand new FEP sheet and now it is printing perfectly. So if you're getting bad prints, it is because more likely it's a FEP sheet. Uh, the only other thing I would suggest is, as you can see, the printers are actually on uh, another level compared to the build service. This table isn't 100% level. If uh, And it's really important, I didn't realize this, you need to make sure that the printer itself is 100% level, as level as you can make it. The more level it is, the better it is. Um, if it's not level, you will encounter lots of really strange, really weird problems when printing. Uh, so if that is not the so when you're setting up, make sure your printer, the whole thing, is leveled off. Uh, otherwise, that will cause problems as well. But I hope you like this video. Uh, thank you so much for checking it out. If you want more videos on um, uh, on resin, on resin printing, anything like that, uh, you know what things to print. Because the vast majority of things I see uh, being printed are um, like uh, action figures and figures and that sort of thing. Uh, I don't print any figures. I actually print uh, machine uh, parts for to be used as uh, you know in the product. So for me, uh, the, a lot of the action things with little bits sticking out, it doesn't really help. Uh, so if you have any questions about 3D printing, please put them in below. I'll be more than happy to try and answer them the best I can. But uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do. I'll see you again uh, in the near future.